behind me. And I pop Bentley truck on my Versace driveway. Looking like money back, money back, money back, uh. Money back, money back, money back. 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 And my with me pretty too. They look like bridesmaids. And they uh. Then so don't be talking sideways. Salty, they sodium, they jelly, petroleum. Always talking in the background. Chef Cardi B, I'm f up. I see you f at the f again. While you f was sleeping on me, I'm in 40 bands by 4 p.m. They be taking everything you want. I'm like a walking. I don't understand what this hate is about. How you go f your man with my name in your mouth? The NFL on EA Sports brings us to North Carolina and Bank of America Stadium here in Charlotte. Just a few moments ago, this building was shaking as the Carolina Panthers emerged from the tunnel here in Charlotte. They are ready to go as the Panthers are set to match up with the Miami Dolphins. Now it's Barner. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Now a play fake here on first down. And is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. Picked off by Kiko Alonso. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. After the interception, here's Tannehill. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. That's called setting the tone right away. It certainly is, and it lets you know just how important communication is amongst the offensive line. They talk about it all the time, knowing each other's moves. You've got to be coordinated and in sync. Otherwise, your quarterback gets hit. Eluding the pressure right. Now he's going to throw it back deep over the middle. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. Going to look deep for Wilson, and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. I know you felt like saying touchdown there, didn't you, partner? That looked like a sure six points, but the contact jarred it free. Got his hands on it, could not hold on through the end of the play. On fourth down, Matt Hawk to punt it away. Fair catch called for in May, but now we'll have to see about the penalty. A little too amped up there, got to him before he had a chance to catch it. Another example of players in tough spots getting the protection that they deserve. Got to make sure that he's able to catch the ball before you get to him. Now it's first and 10 after a costly penalty there on fourth down. Now a toss. This is McCaffrey. Able to shake free for about seven up to the 35. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Newton now to throw. They're looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. And out across midfield, down to the 45. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Okay, when the big guy runs a corner route, you're asking a lot, no matter who's covered him. No matter whether it's a linebacker or a defensive back, yeah. he usually has the advantage because of his body type. Pitching it out to McCaffrey. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. 
Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Draw play as Newton gives to McCaffrey. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. The tackle by Robert Quinn. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. And caught left side, Olsen. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Newton to Olsen there for a Carolina first down. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. This is McCaffrey on the give, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Xavier Howard up to make the tackle. Well, usually you don't think of the cornerback coming in for a no-gain play, but that's what we had there. Nice tackle. Yeah, and how about the range, too? Coming from the outside part of the play, moving his way into the inside and making that play happen. No gain for the offense, big play for the defense. Here's Newton. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Newton now, after the pick on the last drive, three for three to start this drive. It's first and 10. With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gauden with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. Four down, four down. Check. Four down, four down. Six, Back to throw. Newton. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. No gain on the screen there. It's second down. So many screen passes are the result of excellent acting by everyone. But sometimes the guy who's getting the ball tips the play off. <laughs> you know, the running back, because he's, he's eager to get the pass. And sometimes he doesn't act very well about whether he's going to block or leak out or whatever. And I think that they saw that. And that's why they were able to get to him on it. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It's a loss of two, now third down. Throwing on third down, Newton. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? So it's an empty trip downfield there as they get a missed field goal on fourth down. And I didn't see anything in the setup. It's a good snap, good hold. Yep. He just pushed it, and that one never wanted to come back. Tannehill and the Dolphs break the huddle. Come up first and 10 at their own 23. Tannehill on the run. He'll let this go deep right side. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly. Well, once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Back to the air, Tannehill on second down. Buying time to his left. 
And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. The improv act there, good for nine. And now they'll be looking at a third and short, third and one. Eighteen yards on that one, and a Miami first. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. On first down, it's Gore. Finds a seam inside the 40, and he cuts it back right. There goes Frank Gore, and all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Frank Gore, 51 yards, and the Dolphins are in for six. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. This is taken at his four. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? So after the inflation on first, now second and ten. Hey, four down, four down. Ready. Throwing again. Newton. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. When the offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. To throw again. Newton. He finds his man, the tight end Olsen. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Throwing again is Newton. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the 42. Whenever you see a team deciding to throw the ball in third and one, as a defensive player, my mindset is we've got them now, and that's why they dialed up the blitz and got after them. But occasionally, I want to pass it on third and one. I mean, not a lot for sure, but sometimes just to keep the defense guessing. Oh, no doubt. You want to break tendencies as you go along with a game because you don't want them to just say, oh, third and one, we know exactly what they're going to do. But in this situation, as an offensive lineman, as a running back, I want to know why I didn't get the football. Right, let's go. They will go for it. Now Newton escaping the pressure right. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And the Dolphins get the football in great field position. So, Charles, why in the world do you take that risk there? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense on the surface. But I've been in enough of these coaches and, and, and enough of these meetings along the way. Sometimes they're so confident in a play call that they don't care about the situation. They think that that play, at that time, they're going to run it and pick up whatever they need. So maybe that's what influenced him there. I'm guessing because I have no other explanation. Yeah, that's tough. Own side of the feet. That chunk of yardage to pick up. Head scratcher. On second down, here's Tannehill. Flushed out right. Going to look deep for Wilson. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Albert Wilson as the first half is winding down and the Dolphins are able to grow their lead. Extra point up and good by Sanders and it's now 14 to nothing. Sanders now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. 
Oh, good move. And he'll take it past the 25 and to the 28-yard line. Here are the Panthers now as their offense comes back out onto the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. On second and 10, Newton. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And this offense gonna elect to burn him out with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. Final shot before the break. Newton. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by T.J. McDonald. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So we've reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Dolphins taking a lead to the locker room. As we send you to our EA Studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Out comes the Dolphins. Now they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. Play action. It's Tannehill. Now he's going to go deep down the left side. And this will be caught at the 30. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Frank Gore. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Dolphins add on to their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. And a nice return sets them up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Panthers offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. That'll be caught by his tight end, Ian Thomas. And he'll be taken down, but not before he worked past the 50. First target, first catch, and a first down. Try to get to the outside. This is McCaffrey. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. I enjoyed watching Robert Quinn in pregame warm-ups with you down on the field. Did it surprise you how tall and angular he is? You wouldn't think he'd be able to play against a run that well, would you? But he can, and he showed it right there, didn't he? That's that wrestling background he has. He understands leverage as well as anyone in the game. A big-time wrestler in high school. He didn't lose very often. Three-time heavyweight state champ in South Carolina. And look at this. Cam Newton intercepted a third time. Picked off at the 23, and his guys will take over at the 25-yard line.
Tannehill and the Dolphins break the huddle. Come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Out of the gun, Tannehill. He's going to sling this deep downfield. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. But one thing's for sure, they're still taking their shots downfield, even with a big lead. Yeah, I think it's way too go into a shell, so I like what they're doing. Continue to take your shots, continue to be aggressive. It's not their job to slow themselves down. Line of scrimmage, again the 25, second and 10. On second and 10, Tannehill flushed to his right. Now he's going to let it go deep right side. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. They'll fake it. Now Tannehill forced out to his left. Looking for Amendola, and it's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowler Luke Kinkley that picks it. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. Amendola, he was the intended target. Now problems right out of the gate. We're going to get a delay. So that'll back him up five. Play clock down to zero, and this is not the way to start a drive. That's going to set him back five yards. 